Everybody should be blessed to work with Coach McClure on a daily basis. Uh, people ask me what that's like all the time. First of all, he is the best math teacher at Theodore High School because he used to teach in the gym. He teaches from bell to bell. Kids don't come out of the room. So he, when he said he's the best math teacher at Theodore, he is. He's also one of the best coaches around. Uh, does a tremendous job, always has. Uh, we're very supportive of each other. I think in sometimes in boys and girls basketball, that may not be the case, but I root for him and he roots for us and we are both Theodore graduates. This is my 34th year at Theodore High School. That tells you I love Theodore High School. It'll be my 15th year as a head coach. And I have been blessed by the Lord to still be coaching the sport that I love at a school that I love with great kids. Uh, just a tremendous blessing. And the second thing I want to say, I, I want to thank each and every one of you guys who is responsible for us having these media days. Because basketball is important to me and all these other coaches here that have been here today. And it's nice to be able to come and talk to the media about your kids and about your program. So I just want to thank each and every one of you from the bottom of my heart for having these media days. And I hope they continue long after I'm gone and I can come back and listen to some people who hopefully somebody will have somebody that will take Coach McClure's place. It will be just as funny as he is. <laughs> but, uh, you know, a little bit about us this year. Last year I stood up here and told you we had 11 seniors, a great group of young men. Uh, one of them's playing college ball now. Jordan O'Neill's at Cahoma Community College. I think Jordan has a shot to play four-year ball uh, somewhere. A uh, great kid. We're really going to miss him. I have four returning seniors this year. Uh, that's the only varsity experience we have. Uh, Pedro Nelson, point guard, been playing with me for three years. Have Clarence Chastain, who's a really good defensive player. Uh, great kid. Have Demetrius Bowie. He's going to be a forward. And then I have Trey Pines, who I call the junkyard dog. He's the toughest basketball player in Mobile County. Uh, when he guards you, you know it. Uh, he's tough. And he's a winner. Uh, so those are my four. And, and you know, we're going to have to have great leadership out of those four if we're going to be successful because no other players on my team have any varsity experience. And you know there's a, there's a big difference in varsity and JV. Uh, and we're going to have one freshman playing for us who's going to be – a big-time player one day. I'm sure a lot of you already know about him. And we're going to have at least three, possibly four sophomores playing for us. So we're going to be young. But I hang my hat on defense. That's the most important thing there is in basketball, in my opinion. That's how you win championships. Without it, you're not going to win. That's what I believe in. Uh, because you're not going to shoot the ball well every night. But if you play great defense, you always have a chance to win. So that's what we hang our hat on. That's what we spend the majority of our time on. That's never going to change as long as I'm coaching at Theodore. And we're going to have to be good defensively to start with because I have eight players playing football. And I'm going to have two varsity players and about six or eight JV kids playing against McGill and some people like that at the beginning of the season. And, Lord, if we can't hold them from scoring a lot of points, we have no chance to start with. It's going to be tough. Talk about the challenges of teaching, man. I'm telling you, your kids play so hard every time. Even in some of our, it's, it's, it's no letdown. You know, just talk about some of the challenges you face as a coach instilling that into those kids. Well, it, it's more of a challenge now, I think, because a lot of our kids – I don't want to call them soft, but a lot of kids nowadays don't want to work hard. They haven't been taught how to work. Uh, if you criticize them, they take it personal, pout like babies. And we're trying to teach them how to take constructive criticism and tell them that this is for your good. We're trying to help you, and we're trying to help your team. It's nothing personal. And that one day you're going to be out in this world, which is what this is all really about, and you're going to have a boss that might get on your butt one day and how are you going to respond to that? Are you going to quit? Then how are you going to pay your bills and take care of your family? We talk about that a lot with my team because I think that's the bigger picture that we're trying to get across to these kids. So it is a challenge, but I will say this. I've been blessed with great kids and great players at Theodore, and that's why we've been successful. It's not because of me. It's because of the players. You're not going to win without players. Now, you have to coach them, but you've got to have some talent. I've had some, and I've had kids that are willing to buy in and play hard all the time. And I think that's just an expectation that, that if you're going to play basketball at Theodore, you're going to play great defense or you're going to sit on the bench. 
and that's and they and I think our kids know that now, uh, and so I think they've bought in. And I do have trouble out of some of them, but Coach Wooden said one time that bench is the coach's best friend. No. One extreme to the other. It seems like. Never. Um, the first varsity year there in 06, when my son played for me, we had nine seniors. And that was a big loss. And the next two years were extremely tough. And I knew when I took that job it was going to be that way. Uh, but I've never lost that many seniors. And, and normally I don't keep that many. But, you know, I had 11 good kids that were loyal to me. And I think loyalty goes both ways, and I was loyal to them and kept those kids, and some of them I could have maybe could have let go. But those kids played for me. They were part of my program for four years, and I thought they deserved to be on the varsity. And if you lose those kids, you know, next year comes around, and that's, how, that's my job to coach and teach. And like you say, if they're young, that's, you know, that's not an excuse. They gain experience, and, you know, that's what I go there every day for, to, tr to try to work to, with those kids and try to help them get better. And so I've never had that many at one time, and it, it's going to be tough. But I really like the kids that I have. I uh, have a great freshman group and a great sophomore group. And uh, we're going to struggle early, but I think by the end of the year, we're going to be somebody to deal with. And on down the road, uh, next couple of years, we're going to be really good. process of letting them learn your system and then like you say down the road for them to have learned your system yeah that's one thing I, i'm not going to lie to you i'm very excited about ej simmons freshman point guard he is days on ingram like in his passing ability and his court vision it's unbelievable his vi the vision that he has and the way he passes and sees the floor as a ninth grader and, if, and I know you saw him play this summer. He made some passes this summer, hit a couple of my players right in the mouth because they weren't prepared for the ball and they were <laughs> wide open. So he sees things that a lot of the kids doesn't see. He's going to be a phenomenal player. With that in mind, when I get all my guys off the football field, we're going to push the ball because when the ball's in EJ's hands, most of the time something good happens and it's easy shots. Uh, so that's how we're going to play. And when I had days on Ingram, that's the same way we play because I think when you have horses, you got to let them run. And uh, – I've got a, a lot of the guys are young, so we're going to make mistakes, including EJ. But I'm really excited about his talent and him enabling us to get a lot more easy baskets. Because, you know, when you have to go against that set defense, sometimes it's tough and sometimes we struggle to score. But when you get people in transition, you can, that's when you can get some easy baskets. And so that's, that's the exciting part for me to, to try to play up tempo a little bit and uh, let him work. When you see a lot of these smaller schools, they have to you're a 7 a school of the largest classification in the state of Alabama. When you look at like a Michael P. Ryan and other athletes who decide to play two sports or sometimes three sports, what kind of benefits do you see in being a multiple sport athlete? Well, I think it's great because, number one, I, I think some kids burn out when they only play one sport all the time. I think they get to play for different coaches who may have different styles because they may see that when they get to college. I think – Football, obviously, at Theodore helps me out because of the weight program. Coach Ridgeway, fantastic, great job in the weight room at Theodore High School. And that just benefits me because when they come off that football field, they're strong. And, you know, that helps so much in basketball. So I, and, you know, you only go to high school one time. you got four years. And then you go to work for the next 50 years. So I think if you want to play three sports, I'm, ne I'm never going to tell a kid not to play a sport. Because I wouldn't want anybody to do my son that way. And I try to treat kids the way I want my son treated. So I think it's beneficial for them to play. And if they want to play, that's fine with me. So I, I, I think it does nothing but help them. How has, how has EJ Simmons been in the preseason? I'm telling you, for all the media that's here, this kid is the next one. And, uh, you know, just talk about some of the things that you saw over the summer that you've been working with. Um, Unbelievably mature to be so young. Uh, I know he had some some problems at middle school, and we addressed it. Me and him sat down, and we addressed some of those issues. And I told him that if he was, you know, if you're going to be a leader, then you there comes a lot of responsibility with that. That leaders don't do this, and they don't do this, and they do this. This is what we expect. And he took that to heart. And I've seen nothing 
but good things. I'm in the weight room. He works hard, uh, and we have ran him more this off season than probably ever. And he's one. You know, he's right up there with the with the with the leaders. Um, to be so young, he's just really been really been very mature. Uh, I think as a freshman, he might possibly uh, become the leader of the team. That's possible. And, and playing that point guard position is obviously important because he. He has a lot of good leadership skills that I've seen already. Coach, will we, able, will we see any press defense from you this year? I know you said you had a bunch of guards, you got to let them run. What about on that defensive side? Well, I'm, I'm – to be honest with you, I'm, uh, I'm half-court man-to-man. I, I like to be solid. I don't like to gamble. I'm not saying I won't pick up a full man some when I get everybody back because – and the reason I say I might do that some is because I think on down the road we're going to have enough athletes to do that where we don't get tired, and I think that would be to our benefit. But my style for the most part will be half-court man. And, and I, you know, I think I don't like to take a lot of chances. I like to stay solid and make, and make people beat us. And uh, so for the most part that's what we'll do. But uh, don't fall out of your chair if we pick up. Half court or something, some I mean full court sometimes. We might occasionally do that.